Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and you're on MisplacedStraws.com, where music comes to life. And my guest today is making his second trip to the site. We first spoke after a show back in 2019, and now his band House of Lords just released a fantastic new record called Saints and Sinners with a somewhat new lineup. Please welcome James Christian. Welcome, James. How are you doing, Jeff? I'm doing great. It's always a pleasure to talk with you. And you as well. Now, before we get into the record itself, um, let's talk a little bit about the band. You know, for the past okay. close to 20 years now, the core of it has been you and the incredible Jimmy Bell on guitar. Um, over the last few years, longtime drummer BJ Zampa and bassist Chris mm -hmm. Tristram have left. Yeah. But perhaps most relevant for this record, um, Mark Mangold on keyboards has joined the band. Talk a little bit about kind of the changes in the band over the past few years since the last record and who's makes up the lineup now. Well, um, you mentioned Chris Tristram. Um, he's actually still with the group, going to be touring with us. Oh, great. He just didn't, he didn't play on the record um, for various reasons that didn't happen. But um, um, Mark Mangold was a, another story. Uh, Mark was introduced to me by Fiona. Mm -hmm. who is also a friend of my wife, Rob and Beck. So it's a small community of people that know us, you know, other people. Mm -hmm. And Mark happens to be somebody that I've known of for years, uh, back to the days of Michael Bolton, because he mm -hmm. was working with Michael when he was doing Fool's Game. And that was, uh, at the same time I was in, you know, in Connecticut, Mark was in Connecticut working with Michael. So mm -hmm. we just never ran into each other. Mm -hmm. We knew each other, but we never ran into each other. Fiona reintroduced us and comes to, you know, come to find out he loves the same style of music. When I brought up the word, I love stuff that's pompous. He just started laughing. He said, <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I thought I was the only one that ever used that word. I said, nope, me too. So, you know, that was a great way to, to start the conversation. And we knew what kind of record we wanted to do. Now, when you have Jimmy Bell, on guitar so we know where we are there mm -hmm. we just didn't know where we were going with the music with mark in the band but we managed to make this happen in a way that everybody shines on the record they showcase and but there's still room for everyone to to do their thing along with the new drummer uh johan kohlberg from sweden yeah and mark's a friend mark's been on this site many times with his band american tears and mm -hmm. as soon as i heard that the two of you were working together it was almost like the first thought that went through my head was it's about time yeah <laughs> I, you know the thing is it really is because there's only one keyboard player that i've worked with mm -hmm. and that was you know i mean i've worked with other keyboard players yeah. prior to greg jeffria but greg jeffria was only like keyboard player like that that I've mm. ever worked with. And and let's face it, he's kind of a, you know, hard person to replace because he's, you know, he's a large figure. So um, years went by and we didn't have a keyboard player for many reasons. Financially, mm. it didn't make any sense to bring a keyboard player over to Europe. It costs a lot of money, all those keyboards. But uh, so we managed to just use tapes when it came to the keyboard parts. Um, and I, I, we all got kind of tired of doing it and me, almost at the point where we're hell, if we don't even, if we don't tour, at least we're going to put out a record that we love, but we mm -hmm. are going to tour. We're going to make it work because the record is doing so well that, uh, the touring part took, took care of itself, yeah. you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, working with Greg Jeffrey and House of Lords has had, you know, two distinct eras. There were the early mm -hmm. records with Greg on keys and yeah. kind of a few different guitar players. And yeah. then since 2005 with Jimmy and you guys have really become more of a guitar band on those later records. Correct. And, and for me, this record is really the I love both eras of the band. And this is really mm -hmm. the best of both worlds. You know, Mark really brings that traditional House of Lords sound from those first three records back. And it yeah. frees Jimmy up to, you know, just be his amazing self on it. Do you feel that it's kind of a throwback to those first three records? Absolutely. And, you know, the thing is, Jimmy has even mentioned many times, oh, we should get a keyboard player, we should get a keyboard <laughs> player. You know, so he wasn't like 
you know, worried that hey, somebody else is going to start stealing my solo. Yeah. You know, you, you, Jimmy plays a solo, you're going to know it, even if it's only one. <laughs> you know, he's just that kind of player. But um, the both of them together, it's just, you know, they're, they're so good at what they do that when they start doing solos together, which they do uh, quite a few times on the record, it's just pure magic. I just love it. I love listening to it, you know? And now when you put the record together, you know, have you guys been able to actually play together as a band yet? Or has it been, you know, everybody does their part and sends it in? You know, the funny, the funny part of it is, is we already know we, we could play it together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we do something and it's done on Zoom, like I work on Zoom with, um, with Mark Mangold, Zoom or whatever, mm -hmm. Skype or whatever we have, at that moment, um, we we work in the same room. My studio, my screen is like 55 inches wide. So he's in my studio when we're working. Uh, with Jimmy, it's a, you know, I don't need to be in a room with Jimmy. I've worked with him for like mm -hmm. 10, 12 years. Um, he, I, he knows where the solo sections are. He knows what we're looking for. And he goes in and he does his parts. 99% of the time, he usually comes back the way we want it. He, are, he, he just knows. He's an old, you know, he's old school. He mm -hmm. knows what, what's supposed to be done. Um, on this record was a little different because now he had a keyboard that was taking in a lot of real estate on, on the uh, track. So you had to be a little bit more picky about what you wanted to play and where you wanted to play it. Mistress of the Dark is a perfect mm -hmm. example where you have power guitars and power keyboards going on pretty much through the whole song, but not really fighting each other complimenting each other so yes it was a lot of a lot of great creative things happened on this record yeah and i think the word you just used complimenting each other perfectly mm -hmm. sums the record up because mm -hmm. i think you know in the song house of lord house of the lord to me right. really stands out because you know you have marks playing and you have jimmy's and there are times when they kind of overlap and work well together and there are times yeah. when they're playing separate and, and it really fits the song which is always an important right. thing yes that's the most important i mean can you imagine if they were playing 100 percent all the time i mean it would just be a, you know it just wouldn't work that's yeah. where the the beauty of being able to hear things over and over again and having your time to really break down sections and say, let's do this here. And nobody had an ego. If we said maybe there won't be a guitar for a bar here. It wasn't like Jimmy was going to freak out. or There was yeah. going to be no keyboards here. It was what's right for the song. What makes it build? So mm. that was a great marriage. And then you know, again, I have to mention Johan over in mm. Sweden, who is, you know, the only, the furthest away, but he had the task of, playing to some of the stuff we gave him because we didn't give him complete uh, tracks at the time. So mm -hmm. I kind of had to tell him, this is what's going to go on here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, be aware, you know, it's like that's pretty good stuff he did for, for all we put him through. Oh, without a doubt. Yeah. And, and as far as kind of writing and creating the record, did you, Jimmy and Mark all collaborate or did those guys bring in different parts there. that fit together? How did the writing work? Well, the writing worked, you know, there were songs where, you know, Mark Mangold brought in, uh, you know, a majority of it. And then others where he joined in on stuff we already had. There was, again, nobody, it wasn't like uh, somebody had to have more songs than anybody else. Mm -hmm. We, Mark and I did three songs together before, before we even chose one. And those three never made the record, mm -hmm. you know? So it wasn't, we were looking, it, it, we were looking for something specific. Those first three songs didn't give me the uh, feeling of like, wow, we are definitely on a good uh, footing here. And we need to, I, we needed to have um, a song to launch us. That mm -hmm. song launched the way we were writing was House of the Lord. Mm -hmm. When that came about, we all knew where the record was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that song to me, from the first time I heard the record and even going back, listening over and over, that kind of feels like the centerpiece of the record that, you know, you can yeah. kind of tell that everything came off of what that song became. Well, that's a very good uh, word to use. It was a centerpiece. Mm -hmm. I've never heard it said like that, but I would say, yes, if you had to 
give one song to someone to say, what does the record sound like? Mm -hmm. Well, here, this is, is, is pretty much like this. Yes. So, I agree. And you, know, you mentioned touring before. With the pandemic, you couldn't really hit the road very much behind New right. World, New Eyes. Um, right. You did a couple runs with Saint of the Lost Souls and Indestructible. But mm -hmm. considering the, the early returns on this record have been so good, what are your touring mm -hmm. plans going to be for this record? Well, we're, we're getting offers for stuff already now for next year. And they're all, it's all festival stuff mm -hmm. already, which is way happening for me. I'd ra rather be in a festival situation where there's 10,000 people to play mm -hmm. for than maybe 250 or 300 people doing a club uh, um, venue. Not that I wouldn't do them, because I would. I started in clubs. Uh, I loved it then. And then I went to big uh, arenas with House of Lords and, and Cheap Trick and Scorpions, done all that, but I still love going back and being one on one with people in clubs. You can't beat it. So, but the fact of the matter is, when you're promoting a record, festivals is the best thing to do because mm -hmm. you know you've got an audience. So, um, we have Hard Rock Hell in February or March of next 2003, and then we have the Frontiers Festival which is um, something that's going to be prom uh, promoted and talked about very soon. They're in the works of putting it all together. Yeah. And yeah. the touring lineup would be uh, Jimmy, Johan, Mark, and Chris. Yeah. And Chris, Tristan, right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, and um, you, know, you mentioned the festivals and that was one thing I, I've always thought of when you see like a lot of the monsters of rock cruises and the festivals mm -hmm. and things like that. You know, in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking like, you know, this is House of Lords needs to be involved in this stuff. So I'm glad to hear that, you know, some of those festival kinds of things are in your plans, because I think that people that may not have heard much of the band since, you know, the original glory days yeah. will be mm -hmm. really surprised when they hear how great, you know, the later stuff is, and especially this record. So hopefully, you know, festivals like that will bring in some new fans or, you know, regain some old ones. Well, you know, it was really the weirdest thing with, um, I, I, there was when w there was talk of us getting on certain tours like a Monsters of the Rock mm -hmm. or, or, um, or um, Sweden Rock mm -hmm. and things like that. And all that came up at those times because they didn't really know the later material mm -hmm. was do they still have you know a, a few members from the original yeah. group and it happened to be had we had like the greg jeffrey in the band mm -hmm. there, there were every every venue would have would have taken us because of the familiarity to the music that they knew mm -hmm. they weren't even listening to the to the later stuff although mm -hmm. now they are i don't know mm -hmm. why because this record brought them back mm -hmm. for some reason the keyboards made the difference if you go figure well, do you think that it's almost kind of like a blessing and a curse, you know, that House of Lords has had those two distinct eras, you know, almost like, do you think that if it were a different name in the Jimmy Bell era, that some of those places yeah, may have listened to you a little it, more? You know, it's hard to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, are you, I'm sorry, you're starting to break up oh. and... Um, I lost you there. What was the rest of that question? Yeah, I was saying, you know, do you think that maybe if it was a different name, they wouldn't have expected, well, this person needs to be in the band or that person needs to be in, and they would have actually listened to it and given you guys, you know, the chance that they didn't give you now? Yeah, I, I you're, you're probably right. I think maybe you are right there. Uh, there, there was a big presence with Jafria and, mm -hmm. and House of Lords. I mean, it just was... Uh, the relationship between Greg and Gene Simmons. There was just so much about that that got so much press, mm -hmm. so much that even when the new House of Lords came out and they still knew that I was a singer, I it just didn't get into the mainstream of that uh, mm -hmm. community the way other things would have. Um, what can you do? You know, we, we were putting out good records, yeah. but they were, you know, we did a couple of casinos that worked out great. Whenever we did a, um, a supporting act, we did a few fest few festivals, and um, one in Spain and one in a couple other places that went great. But th they took some chance. They took the chances. You know, they heard the mm -hmm. record, and that's how they booked it. 
Uh, cruises like uh, Monsters of Rock and any of those cruises, they go by who's in the band, you know, uh, as far as, if you notice, it's the same bands every time. Yeah. You know, there's just a few different mm. uh, M3 on the Melodic mm. Rock 3 Festival. It's literally the same bands each time. And one one time the guy called me up. He goes, I'm putting you guys on the show. I heard some of your stuff. You're going on that show. And then it never happened. Mm. But, um, you know, if it happens again, I'm sure this time it'll be a, a different reaction. And kind of going back to that classic era lineup, I mean, I know Greg mm -hmm. doesn't do much, you know, in this world anymore. Mm -hmm. um, right. I've talked with Chuck Wright a couple of months ago when he had his solo record out and he had Lanny Cordola play on his record. Would yeah. you ever you know, reach out and have any of those guys either guest on a House of Lords record or, you know, live on stage or anything like that? Absolutely. You know, and, you know, Chuck, Chuck was, is the, I would take Chuck on the road anytime, you know, but I don't know if it would be enough for him. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, he does a lot of things with it, um, something in Hollywood called um, some kind of um, jam nights or whatever. Mm -hmm. So he's really, really busy with that. So for him to like give that up, it would have to be a, a pretty steady thing with mm -hmm. cheap trick. I'm cheap trick with um, quiet riot it was kind of weekend things mm -hmm. and they, they didn't happen every weekend, but you know, he was able to do both, but no, and no doubt I would take Chuck right in, into the, uh, into the band in, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. Chuck would prefer, believe me, because I know Chuck that, you know, the first three records is what he would want to mm -hmm. um, concentrate on, you know, as far as playing live yeah. and believe it or not, we'll never, we never got away from not having to do 70% of the first three records. Mm -hmm. And even though we had all those other records out, because of the airplay we got on the first three albums, that's what people remember. Mm. Well, one thing I want to say there, when I've seen this version of the band over the past couple of years, I yeah. love that you guys play the later era material just as much. You know, the stuff yeah. from Big Money and Cartesian Dreams and things like mm -hmm. that. I, I yeah. love that you include them in the set and don't just say, okay, that was a record we did. We're never going to play it again. <laughs> right. No, we can, we we do it because we love the songs, yeah. you know, obviously. Uh, and it all depends on where we're playing. You know, sometimes in Germany, our sets change. Uh, mm. In Switzerland, our set changes a lot. We play a place called G7. I don't know if it's still around. But it was a big place, and we did really well in in uh, Switzerland. So we had an audience that was buying our records, our new records, our old records, you name it. So we we could be flexible about what we played there. Mm -hmm. Other places, man, they came there to hear "I Want to Be Loved," "Pleasure Palace," mm -hmm. um, you name it. I could go through the list. Mm -hmm. They wanted what they wanted, you know. Mm -hmm. Well. And kind of switching gears a little, it's been a few years since your last solo record. Any thoughts of you or even your wife, Robin Beck, who's put out some fantastic music? Anything new mm -hmm. coming from her or any thoughts of you doing another solo record? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure I, I will end up doing a solo record. At this point, I'm really so exhausted from doing mm -hmm. this last record that I, the, the, the rest is going to be very, you know, appreciated. Mm -hmm all the way till the end of the year. Uh, and then we'll start gearing up for touring in the beginning of the year. Plus I got to go in for a, um, um, a hip replacement, which mm. is like not that my most fun in the world. That's happening next week, mm. but I should be fine by the end of the year. Yeah. So everything will be good there. Robin's working on a record right now and she's got many writers that she's um, mm. collaborating with. So that's another project I'll do. So my thing, as far as a solo thing, will be way down the line yeah. until House of Lords new tour will be exhausted and Robin's thing comes out. Then we'll probably talk about it. Great. Well, we've been spending some time here with James Christian of House of Lords. The new record is called Saints and Sinners. It's a great record. Um, if you were ever a fan of either incarnation of this band, this record is the best of both of them. So, James, thank you so much with this record. Best of luck with it, and hopefully we can catch you on the road soon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This was a great little interview here. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk soon. Hopefully you guys will be doing another Connecticut show at some point. And you'll be there, right? Of course. You know it. All right. Good. You got it, my friend. Thank to, you. I look forward to it. Bye-bye now. Bye.